Hey guys, Isaac Walton here, Hunting the River King. I'm going to show you a simple method I recently learned on how to stabilize turquoise. So if you saw one of my recent videos, you've seen that I've been out in the Mojave Desert collecting California turquoise. Uh, here's several of the pieces, some really neat ones. This is one from a prior trip. Um, really great stuff, but one issue is, aside from maybe a piece like this that seems to be maybe a little more high grade, a lot of it is really soft. Um, there's a really cool piece that has a neat pattern on it, but it has somewhat a chalky consistency. And in turquoise circles and also other um, rocks that tend to be a little more fragile, there is a way to essentially mix in a epoxy filler that will help solidify it so it can be used to make jewelry or um, preserve it a little bit better. You can see that that has a little bit more of a chalky appearance to it, even though it's still a nice, cool blue. Um, here's one I was just messing around with the Dremel tool on. A little bit harder, not as chalky, but would probably still benefit from it. So there's lots of information out there on how to do this. You'll see everything from these very expensive, um, almost like a pressure cooker vacuum setup uh, to sending it off to a professional who'll do it. Um, however, on Rock and Jim Min websites there are uh, some instructions on how to do this yourself using some fairly simple tools and that's what I'll show you today. So what we have here is essentially a brake line um, bleeder tool, vacuum pump, uh, that you can get online for very cheap, less than $20, all right? Um, and then you'll also need um, one of those vacuum canning suction tools this right here. This is probably $10 or less. I think it actually came with this part that will go into the top. You'll need some epoxy. A lot of places talk about using different types. I just grabbed some Gorilla Glue epoxy. I'm still experimenting with it. There may be better ones out there. And some sort of mason jar. I already have some of the epoxy and acetone that will be mixed in. So I don't have the acetone here, but essentially acetone, epoxy, this vacuum seal lid to create a suction, tubing that will go in the top, um, and one of these brake bleeder vacuums. Now the exact ratio of the epoxy and the acetone that you'll need I will provide in the comments. Um, this is just from what I've seen online. I'm not an expert in this, but so far it seemed to have worked out for me and I hope it will work out. For me. So after you've mixed the acetone and epoxy in the um, ratio and it's inside of your jar, you will need a, a fair amount. There's not a whole lot left in this. You're gonna put your turquoise in there Take this mason jar lid off, um, put this on top, essentially get a vacuum going. Um, the instructions I saw said somewhere, I think it was around 20 um, or so um, on this pressure gauge here, on this vacuum. You'll actually see bubbling happening in here as any little pockets of air or porous cavities within these rocks air is sucked out of it and ideally the epoxy and acetone mixture is then drawn within. What I'll do is I'll do that until I don't see any more bubbles left. That may take 10 minutes or so, just let it uh, bubble. Then I'll release the pressure and I'll do it one more time um, and at that point, you know, once that's all done, I will actually put the regular lid back on, seal it up nice and tight and leave it out there for a week. Okay, so we've got our turquoise in the jar it's hanging out in there submerged in the acetone epoxy mixture the acetone's thinning out the epoxy it's a two-part epoxy we've taken this part off the mason jar that part's a little confusing from some of the instructions you'll see online and then we've got this essentially food preparation vacuum um, seal attachment it's going to go on top you got to get that on there pretty evenly make sure it's solid and then we'll plug this in so here's the setup it's on this is really easy to do. It's going to be all mechanical pressure. And now let's go ahead and start checking if we actually have a seal here. Okay, yeah we do. And the instructions I've read is to get it somewhere around 20. Now again, these are just instructions off the internet. You know, um, do this at your own risk. Um, there is some discussion about you don't want to aspirate, suck up uh, the epoxy resin mixture into your pump. It's going to mess things up. There are kits that essentially have some sort of um, spillover or way to catch it. 
before it gets to your brake bleeder. All right, I'm there, right about 20. Let's take a look at what's going on in the jar. You can see there's some bubbles coming up, a little hard to catch it. There's definitely bubbles coming up. And from how I've read this explained, what's happening is um, the vacuum that's been created is pulling out any air within as much as possible, um, potentially those little porous cavities within the stone, and what's then going to replace it is the acetone resin mixture. And when you take this out in a week's time um, and allow all that acetone to essentially evaporate away, what's left now is resin impregnated within the turquoise. So here's a better view. You can see the turquoise. You can see the bubbles streaming up. Um, a little hard to see, but it is truly all submerged, even though it doesn't appear like that. We're just going to let this do its thing, probably about 10 minutes. I'll come back and check it then loosen it up and apply a vacuum one more time. After that, I'm just going to leave this um, after putting the regular mason jar lid back on outside or somewhere else secure where it's not going to get too disturbed, but gently agitate it. Uh, maybe once a day for a week. After that, I'll take it out, let it dry for a good week, um, and we should be done. All right, let's see what happens. Okay, so I finished sucking the air out of this. You'll hear it, uh, essentially the vacuum releasing here. Now it's time to take this off and put the original lid back on and leave it for a week. Okay, now that's on there nice and tight. Turquoise is all soaking in a bath of diluted, thinned out epoxy, two part. Once again, I'll put the ingredients and the ratio that I've seen posted online in the comments uh, in the video description. Let's go ahead and let this sit. All right, so it's been about a week. Supposedly the stabilization should have been finished by now. Let's take it out. All right, so I've taken it out, drained out the, the liquid. We're gonna put this somewhere where it can dry. Some places say leave it for about a week or so. This looks pretty good. Here's a little more of a close up of what we're working with here. So the epoxy will definitely add a little bit of a sheen to it. Right now the job is to have it soak or dry and solidify as all the acetone is now exposed to air. Let's see how these turn out, but they look pretty good so far. So here we are and we're done. Uh, what I've got here is a lot of the turquoise that I put in and originally showed you that was stabilized. These pieces down here. And here's some examples of what you can do with it once it's stabilized. This is rough. I've used a Dremel tool to do this. Uh, but it's pretty neat what you can do with just some rudimentary polishing tools. You can tell the difference in the more um, bluer, uh, robin's egg blue color here compared to the a little more dull, a little more chalky stuff. Here's a neat little piece too, right there. Looking forward to doing something with that. Now, if you don't mix the epoxy just right and it gets a little thick, you may notice a little bit of a glisten on some of the pieces. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. Just make sure you've thinned uh, it with the acetone according to that ratio that's been shared. Uh, take a look again at the video description. But I will say that doing this has definitely added to the stability of these pieces, allowed me to work with it. It's not all crumbly like it typically was before adding the stabilizer to it. All right. Hope this is helpful to someone. Have a good one.